Hey everyone, welcome to Neil Talks. My name's Neil, and it's time to talk QI. And this week's viewer recommendation takes us to series H and an episode called Hypothetical, which I know nothing about, which is great. So we'll jump right into it, but before I do, don't forget to do all the fun things that help the YouTube algorithm know that you like what you're seeing here on Neil Talks. I don't normally ask for you to hit the thumbs up and subscribe and hit the bell and all of those things, but they really do help the channel. They help YouTube know that you like what you're seeing here, um, and it, it genuinely does make a real difference. So if you haven't yet done that, I'd greatly appreciate it if you did. Now, um, without further ado, let's jump into this one. Hypothetical. Welcome to QI. Man, this well, hair. We bring you a television first, Practically a quiz a show with no answers. Yes, tonight we depart from the certainties of everyday life to explore the realm of hypothetical questions. Or do we? <laughs> the potential Johnny Vegas. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sandy Toxvig. Oh, nice. I love it when Sandy's a guest. The increasingly unlikely Alan Davis. Oh, wait. We're missing a guest. Tonight is the 99th recording of QI. And oh. to celebrate, we have with us the man who thought it all up in the first place. Oh, cool. He can dish it out, but let's see if he can take it. Mr. Lloyd. John Lloyd! Cool. Is this his first time as a panelist? Uh. <laughs> hmm. Ooh, um. <laughs> Ooh, um. Oh, sir, sir, I know, me, sir. <laughs> As if. What's the best way to weigh your own head? Submerge it in water. Well, cut it off, obviously, yeah. it would be. <laughs> yes, but then, then someone else could weigh it, but you couldn't, you see? <laughs> so I normally introduce me last. Yeah. It slightly caught me out, <laughs> and I was applauding myself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was applauding myself insincerely. <laughs> Why would you want to weigh your own head? It's a sort of a boy's thing, isn't it? Can you imagine some poor woman married to a scientist, and she's at home, and she's wormed the dog and fed the children and got everything sorted, and her husband gets home and goes, Good news, dear, I've weighed my own head. <laughs> <laughs> what is one of the most famous ancient moments of scientific discovery? Eureka. Archimedes, 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 Archimedes in the bathtub. Bath. Archimedes in the bathtub. But you just put your head in the bucket. Oh, oh right. Oh, is that right? I so, have yeah. no idea. And that sounds much more scientific. <laughs> <laughs> so by displacement of the water, you can tell. And because water and the density of your head are about the same. You get a very close approximation. And what did your he head weigh when you tried this? It... <laughs> what would you say is the average uh, 12 pounds, weight? apparently. Although, Jerry Maguire, it's 8 pounds. Is it, it 12 weigh? pounds? It, it's, well, it's 4.5 to 5 kilos, which is... I have no idea. Oh, that's two kilos. Kilos. It's, it's like a 9.5 to 11 yeah. pounds. Two point, oh, right. It's about 12 pounds. Yeah, it's about 12 pounds. Well done. <laughs> I'm giving you a point for 12 pounds. It isn't. 5 kilos is 11 pounds. What, what have you got in a pocket in your ears? But the air cavities are cancelled out Take your by out, the... you won't hear the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Love Sandy! <laughs> but there is a modern piece of technology that can do it to frightening degrees of accuracy. Bound to be a laser or something like well, that. No, it's a... MRI? CAT no. scan, a CT. Oh, CAT scan. My dad's got heavy eyes. Have you you've weighed his eyes? No, we've not weighed him, but he, he's... he's very fearful of leaning forward. Just <laughs> like leaning forward, he thinks they're going to come out. <laughs> My grandfather had uh, had two glass eyes, and yet he could see. And he had a glass eye made, which was perfect, exactly like his other perfectly working blue Scandinavian eye. And then he had one made that was bloodshot, and it was known as Grandpa's party eye. And, he... <laughs> <laughs> and when he was going out for the evening, he'd take out the false blue one, he'd put in the bloodshot one, and he'd say, "I'm going out now, and I shan't be back till they match." <laughs> On the subject of heads, do you know anything about uh, Sir Francis Drake? No, I don't mean Sir Francis Drake. But yeah, as I've mentioned him, do you know anything about him? <laughs> Did he just say the wrong name? Uh, Get a haircut. Something yeah. to do with yeah, bowling. Hippie. Yeah, that's right. What do you know about Sir Walter Raleigh? Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> his wife carried his head around. They named a city in North Carolina after, after years after he died. A red velvet bag. Yes. Really? So Walter was executed. And, see uh, why John had to invent a show for this kind of information. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> It was on Buzzcocks last week. It was it. 
<laughs> people did keep heads. There was an Archbishop of Canterbury who was uh, killed in the Peasants' Revolt, and they, they've still got his head in a church in Sudbury. Where, there it is. Oh. Well, now the flesh has rotted off, obviously, but it's been there continuously. I bet it was a few years before anybody wanted to sit next to her at dinner. <laughs> <laughs> she was going, oh, she's not going to bring the head, is she? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we got there, but like many, like many of the questions in tonight's show, there's no the one correct answer. When might you engage in paradoxical undressing? Is it it's, physics it's, or it's, some physics it, or mathematics? No. Is it counterintuitive undressing? It's, that's so, much more what it is. So taking your clothes off if Jeremy Clarkson asks you. Meow. Would be silly. It's, it's taking that? your clothes off when taking your clothes off looks like the worst possible idea you could have. Is, oh. it some, is it some effect of, of hypothermia? Is it some it's mental, mental oh, thing that does... That's right, they do strip. It may be mental, it may be physical. It's not quite understood. Because you never survive once you've got to that stage, you can't actually ask someone why they did it. But it is a common thing. They're I went freezing. in freezing water once in New Zealand, and then I got out and I was completely shocking, livid pink, and right. felt hot. Well, so that's perhaps want. seconds from death, then. Maybe, you <laughs> 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 Maybe... What sort of temperature do you think would start you to on the road to hypothermia, body temperature, I don't mean outside temperature. What's how, the temperature how... in here? <laughs> it's only a couple of degrees. Like, See, once you get to, like, 95 or something. I don't think yeah. you'd have to drop much, maybe four or five degrees below normal Basically, body Basically, that's right, 35 degrees Celsius. There's a very remarkable Briton called Lewis Pugh. Have you heard of Lewis Pugh? Pugh, Pugh. He's a man who's able to control his own body temperature. He does endurance cold swimming. As far as we know, he's the only person known to science who can do what he can do, raise his body temperature at will. He's an X-Man. And we contacted him. And he said that he, uh, he thought he could do so this. he's not coming in here because it's free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said... This is not that unusual. Uh, sadhus in, uh, in India can do this body-raising thing. They put wet towels yes. on and they'd turn up their own body temperature and they would literally steam the towels dry. Can you hire these yeah. people? Yeah. <laughs> Good act. They get on Britain's Got Talent. <laughs> <laughs> but why don't people, in, when they do that sauna thing and they jump into the snow, why don't people get hypothermia then? Is it because they're not in it long enough? They're not in it long enough. Okay. I think that's the point, yeah. yeah. Also, they're pissed, usually. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're Scandinavian. But how can I tell if I am actually dead? A room full of people are cheering. <laughs> 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 It's brain activity. That's the current sort of modern definition, right? No brain activity. It so happens it is a very moot point. There's the difference between legal death and medical death. Wow. In, in the 1830s in France, nobody could be sure whether somebody was dead or not, so they held a prize for the person who could come up with the best way of determining if a person was dead. And even when it was awarded, most of the medical establishment refused to believe uh, the winner, who was a young medical chap. I was just like, no pulse? These were some of the ideas that didn't win. Sticking a thermometer into the stomach to see if the patient was cool enough to be dead. Scalding the patient's arm with boiling water to see if a blister appeared. This just uh, sounds like a typical day of my mum. Get me up for school. <laughs> Sticking a, a long needle into the heart with a flag on the end, and they knew that the, if the flag waved... <laughs> that was such a sweet method. I feel like but this, that's a way to commit murder. But... There was a, a device that had been invented in the 1840s that caused this young fellow, Bouchou, who, who won the prize, suggested the use of this device, which was... Stethoscope? A stethoscope. Mm -hmm. It seems so obvious to us. I uh, feared it enormously, Victorious. Hans Christian Andersen used to sleep with a sign next to his bed that said, I am not dead, I am asleep. Yes, <laughs> that's right. terrified. And there were coffins with bells inside. Mm. And, and for all you Discworld fans, Granny Weatherwax does the same thing. I ain't dead. Saw at the side and yeah. then kind of go up sort of gradually. Don't, yeah. don't go straight up. You've thought There's this too. Well. <laughs> Grimaldi had a pathological fear of being buried alive and he specified in his will that when he died they were to cut off his head oh. before burying him to be quite sure that he wouldn't have to right. ring the little bell. And he wasn't coffin. just weighing it. <laughs> <laughs> they actually had warm mortuaries to encourage putrefaction, so the smell said that he's definitely dead, because, whoa, he stinks, he must be dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's walking around, he's talking, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's time for a round of quick-fire hypotheticals. Oh. Quick-fire hypotheticals! Mm. Oh, wow. A produced segue. And let's say you found a fallen tree in the forest, but did it make a sound as it fell? 
Ooh, yes. Um, no. <laughs> Philosophical question, isn't it? Yeah. That if there's no one to hear a sound... Is, is there a no, sound? Is there a sound? It depends so no. much what you mean by sound, doesn't it? Well, there isn't, because sound is the, the vibration of the eardrum. No, that's hearing. But whether that vibration counts as a sound or not? Is, is well, it's sound, that's the definition of sound is what happens in the ear. There isn't. No, sound that's sound hearing. Hear hearing and sound, sound. two it's different things. Yeah. That's my take. What happens in the ear? No. Do you get that speed between that and your ear? <laughs> oh, Johnny. <laughs> Are you sure about this? I well, no one is sure. That is the point. That's why it's a hypothetical. I disagree that they are sound waves because if you go. You may disagree, but that's. You're welcome to. <laughs> but, uh, but they only become a sound wave when there's an ear to receive it. No. Did you know that light's invisible? If you're in a dark vacuum, if you shoot a beam of light across the eyeballs like that, mm. you can't see it. People said, but that's a stupid uh, answer because the definition of light is something that goes into your eye and is then received. Until it does that, it's not light. Mm. No, no. no, that's such a human-centric definition. I'm, I disagree with John Lloyd on both parts there. The oh. point is, it's not as simple as just to say yes or no. God, that's why it's a good God, question. <laughs> We would have unfairly I forfeited someone who said yes just as much as somebody who I said I thought no. you said there was no right answer to this question. There is no, that's why I said, there is, that's why it's a good question. There is There's no two right wrong answer. answers. So if the tree fell down and there was no one there to see it fall, it should still be upright. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Alan, are you keeping well? Yeah. <laughs> if a quick fire hypothetical round takes a really long time, is it still a quick fire? <laughs> You're talking to an alien in a distant galaxy by radio. How could you explain which is right and which is left? Yeah, uh, face north. Your your right side is to the east. Hypothetically, are we looking <coughs> at any uh, common reference point? That's yeah. the point. Yeah. You you can can't. See, can you see Mars? Yeah. Well, we're on the right. Side. <laughs> you can't explain it just by language. That that is really the point. I, I guess east, west, north, south are just arbitrary titles too. So what if they've got four eyes and eight arms and they don't have one yes. or two things? Yeah. Exactly, they may not be symmetrical in any way. Yeah. yeah, they might have 19 versions of left. Yeah. Yes. Can you imagine that in a sat nav? Why do we always draw them like that? I have no so idea. Strange. We might just have one eye in the middle of their head. Yes, certainly the ones that probe me look nothing like that. <laughs> Which is a mnemonic for when you forget which is left or right temporarily. Do you do that? Hold up your left hand. It makes an L. I remember the thumb I used to suck when I was a very small child. That uh, that's my right hand. It's no like a therapy this? session, this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful story about a, a famous uh, ocean liner captain, and he had a little silver box that he kept in his pocket, and every time before they came into port, he would open up the little silver box and he would look and push it away, and he finally died. Uh, his uh, second in command said, I just must have a look in the silver box and see what it is. And he opened up the box and it said, port, left, starboard, right. <laughs> 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 Take someone who has been blind from birth, right, and let him or her handle a sphere and a cube, and then there's a new operation that restores their sight, and you show them the sphere and the cube. Will they be able to tell which is which just by looking? Do you think it's the first you... thing they'd want to do? I would I think know. so. <laughs> no, they can't. The what information they... that their eyes tell them is, is a meaningless junk. For it, exactly right. Huh. What would feel like if you could feel a corner? You could... Yeah, I don't know, man. Have you done the reverse thing, which is to go to that, there's a restaurant where it's completely dark? I went to one in Berlin. Does it make a difference to how you to eat things? I'd imagine, I, mean, I don't yeah. mean that you miss your mouth, but I mean that it tastes different. Yes, it does. That's really the point. And you feel it, and you smell it, and you use all these other things that you usually forget to use when you're eating food. The weird thing is going to the loo, of course. This waiter takes you by the hand. He, he, do, he doesn't actually take the old chap out or anything like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a bit, a bit cheeky. Unless you tip him very Unless well. you tip him very well. <laughs> <laughs> Now, a lorry load of birds are being weighed on a weighbridge. At some moment, all the birds simultaneously rise off their perches and, and flap in the air. Does the lorry weigh less? Yes. When, when they rise up in the air? Yes. Uh, well, only if they... Got a yes and a no? So they're not in contact with the actual no. thing? So then no, yes. They, they would they... No, uh, Is it sealed? Uh, on... the... They're inside the lorry. You can't see them. That's... It weighs the same, and it's got something yes. to do... It's something very similar to... Um, if you weigh yourself and then you go and do a number two and weigh yourself again, you don't lose the weight of the number two. Ah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh... You, you, you do, Johnny. The answer is no. not to poo on the No, seat. no. 
Yeah. Because if you're carrying a bowling it's ball a and you're on the scales and then you throw the bowling ball in the air... Yeah. You weigh less. You and the air have yeah. created that weight. Mm. So whatever the birds put themselves within yes. there, it still weighs the same. But the interesting question... And you're absolutely right. I mean, you can, you can sort of test don't it. Don't pass it off that easily. Yeah. <laughs> the... I, I, I don't fully trust the answer to that last one, but maybe one of you guys can explain it to me How in a little more detail. work? And you think that you've been cursed, so you change your own behaviour and bring about your own downfall. That's kind of more or less precisely right. It, it, it's a negative version of what effect? The it's, placebo effect. Yes, it yeah. is indeed. There I'm is on a... the wrong show. I should be on Mastermind. <laughs> you should. Be. It only works if you believe it. Yes. If I made a voodoo doll of Johnny yeah. and I stuck pins in it, it yeah. wouldn't work unless I sent him a sort of picture on his phone to show I'd done it. The point is, you have to believe it. Yeah, he, he believes. Yeah. But are the curses? Do you know what the Twenty Seven Club is? There's a curse supposedly. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is musicians dying at Twenty Seven. Particular age, 27, that seems to, to resonate in uh, popular cultural history. Jim Morrison, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, Kurt Cobain, Amy Winehouse. The yeah, Stones Jim Morrison, guy. Jimi Hendrix, Janis, Janis Joplin. Joplin. Whoa. Yeah. Kurt Cobain. Vicious. Kurt Cobain. Brian Jones. And Brian Jones, in fact, yes. Okay. And Robert Johnson of Crossroads fame. All 27, really. They're all aged 27. Do you know about the curse of the ninth? What would that be? They all died on the ninth. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. Yeah. Is that a... <laughs> Curse of the Ninth. No, it's symphonies. Oh, oh yes, you're not supposed to write more than nine. You're supposed you to finish your ninth and you die one. while writing the tenth. tenth Happened yeah. to Dvorak and Beethoven and Bruckner and Schubert. What an unusual serial killer that one. <laughs> <laughs> Only that had CSI Vienna. <laughs> Hypothetically, what would happen if Schrodinger put a Siamese cat in the fridge? You don't know until you open the door, do you, whether the cat is alive? That is, it, the no, it's both alive and dead until you open the door. Cat. But something quite extraordinary would happen. It would turn into an ordinary cat. Well, almost, <laughs> almost. <laughs> turn into a dog. No, no. <laughs> yeah, what, why, why Siamese? It's got a white body and a black tail and black ears and, and black, black mouth black and black socks. In other words, black extremities. Uh, they're cold. Oh. Right? So if they're... you put the whole animal in a fridge, right. yeah. it goes black. It goes black. Oh, That's what happens. Oh. Its fur has this peculiar colouring. That's real, really? So you throw a Siamese cat out into the snow and it goes dark. And when you dark. take it out, does it go pale again? Yes, it will, it will go back to its normal colour again. Would it be worth same... trying I'm, I'm just for the laugh, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. So no. many cats, so few recipes. I just think. <laughs> <laughs> do you know? Do you know about buttered cat? You... There's a recipe. <laughs> <laughs> because there are two laws, aren't there? One is that if you have a piece of butter oh, toast and you drop it, always it falls butter, butter side butter down. Side it falls butter side down. But a cat always lands cat, on its feet. What happens to the cat? It falls butter falls. side up. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were to put a piece of toast with the butter up and attach it to a cat, uh -huh. that's very funny. right. What would happen is the cat would drop and it would have to revolve forever. Well, it's perpetual motion. You get a spinning cat that if you attach that to a turbine. What do you want, Marjorie? I can't believe it's not butter. Oh. I can't believe it's not butter. What if it was margarine, but the cat believed it was butter? Ah, the placebo effect, exactly. What if cats discovered this and started to migrate? Where, where would they what, go? What, what? I don't know. What Step do too do? far, Johnny. Step too far. You're on death row, all right? Okay. Uh, what can you tell me about your last meal? Absolutely whatever you want. Yeah, that's not the case. <laughs> Very you can't even choose what you're going to have for your last supper. In different states it varies, but in some states there's a $20 budget in... You're not allowed to smoke, <laughs> even if you want to. Mostly. Hardly worth being there. It, it almost <laughs> isn't. The fellow called Thomas Grasso, his last words in 1995 were, please tell the media I did not get my SpaghettiOs. I got spaghetti. I want the press to know this. <laughs> <laughs> it's very forlorn, isn't it? I'd want a Kinder Egg. A Kinder Egg, yes. I'd want, I'd, uh, you know, With a key inside. Chocolate, a toy, and a surprise. You're not going to get a Kinder Egg in the States. They're, they're banned. Stop me when you know what I'm talking about now. It's an insectivorous mammal. It's found all around the world. It's active at night. Bats. It's almost totally blind. It, it's... Don't say bat. <laughs> don't say bat. Uh, yeah, yeah. bat. A bat. Yeah. <laughs> Moles. Anteater. What did you say? No, Moles. Not no. It's insectivorous, so it, I mean, it could eat ants. Is it a mole? A mole is the right answer. I said mole. Yeah, yeah. Alan said it first. Did he say mole, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. No, 
Well, because sound point. is just a thing and it didn't show. <laughs> 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 yeah, you... How many moles do you think there are in, in Ireland? None. You're right, there, there, there are none. They right. don't. They were very poly with the They left with the snakes. Oh, what? sweet, look. You say sweet, but almost certainly all photographs of moles that are taken are of dead moles. And you can't tell because their eyes are always it's little like black all those slits. Greetings card pictures, you know, the cat in a deck chair yeah. or a cat hitting the mouth with a spoon. Yeah. They're all dead. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, the ultimate hypothetical question which came first, the chicken or the egg? Uh, 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 chicken. No! no. There's that wonderful old joke about chicken and egg have just made love. And they're lying there having a bit of a post-coital cigarette. And the chicken says to the egg, well, that answers that old question. <laughs> <laughs> a chicken evolved from reptiles that laid eggs themselves, so those eggs were always coming well before there was a chicken. There were eggs. What does it have that no other bird has? Combs. No, no other animal has those strange combs on the head. Oh. It's the longest recorded flight by a chicken in time terms, not distance. 13 seconds, isn't it? Something like that? Is yes. It? <laughs> yes, it is 13 seconds. Is it really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don Boyd has memorised the Guinness Book. But had there been answers, let's see who would hypothetically have won. And our theoretical winner tonight with two <laughs> points is Sandy Toxvig! Of course, of course, of course. In second place is Elf Master General John Lloyd with minus one. <laughs> with an extremely creditable minus seven, Johnny Vegas. <laughs> with minus 27, Alan Davis. <laughs> well, that's all from this hypothetical edition of QI. Or is it? Yes, it is. So, <laughs> good night. That was a fun one. I. I always like those old episodes of when Sandy's a guest because I don't know you can you can env envision why they they tagged her to take over for Stephen. She she's just got something about her that suits this show so so well. She she brings great stories to it. She's incredibly smart and knowledgeable, and it's great seeing those early days where she's just popping in for for an episode. John Lloyd was in this episode, too, and that was a fun novelty, um, especially since he was introduced last, and that just sort of threw a wrench into the works. Uh, it, just, it just felt weird not hearing Alan forth, but, but I wonder, was it specifically because this was episode 99, or did they happen to have a last-minute cancellation that they put that John sort of substituted for, or... Like, I would, I would presume for most episodes, John already knows all the questions and answers. So he would have had to have been sequestered for this one. So I can't ima I imagine it was planned, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. And then this was just a different format than typical because we, we leaned into the hypothetical of it all for the for a lot of these questions, there isn't a an actual right answer or wrong answer. It's uh, it becomes a matter of philosophy and semantics and uh, conjecture and so much so much of hypothetical ends up being in the exact nature of the definition of the words involved and stuff like the chicken and the egg question. Uh, Yes, there were eggs before there were chickens. But what if the question was, what came first, the chicken egg or the chicken? That changes it. And that's how most people interpret that question. So I'm not saying I have an easy answer to that question either, but it may change the answer. Um, I, the, if a tree falls in a forest and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound? And then it becomes, well, what's the definition of a sound? And I disagree with John Lloyd's definition. Um, it's very human-centric to say um, sound only exists if it hits a human ear. Light only exists if it hits a human eye. I guess I just take the more hard scientist view where... Light exists even if it's not observed, and sound exists even if it isn't heard. 
I, I felt like John was defining hearing versus sound, and there is a differentiation. For same as the difference between light and sight, these are different things. They're related for sure, but but they, there are differences. But but it becomes you know maybe the philosopher has a different answer than the physicist has a different answer than the I'm forgetting the word for for word scientist, which is they strangely appropriate i don't know um <laughs> semantician but that's not that's not what i'm lexicographer uh anyway <laughs> this was a fun one this was a different one i i like this show when it it makes me think when it, it makes me question what i know um sometimes you you just you you enter this show with one of these assumed correct answers, sort of one of these public wisdom answers that ends up earning you a klaxon because that, that information is actually wrong. You know, the blind is a bat sort of stuff. And I learned new things that way, but I also, and, and that makes me think because, oh, a thing I thought I knew is wrong and here's the new information that I should replace it. That's that's good thinking. I'm, I'm very cool with learning that way. Um, but I also like questions that don't necessarily have an answer, but make you think. And this, this episode was full of them. And that was, that was a really nice treat. I'm glad I got to see this one. Thank you guys so much for recommending it to me. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time here today on Neil Talks with me. Uh, your time's super valuable to me. Thank you so much for, uh, for sharing it with me. Um, and until next week, everybody. Take care, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.